Good morning. It's good to be with you all here today. Uh, it is LWML Sunday today, so there will be a few things a little different in our service today, as well as coffee hour um, after church. Um, Tuesday evening at 6.30 p.m. is our congregational uh, assembly, so please attend that if you are available, 6.30 Tuesday evening. Uh, men's Bible study breakfast is the 26th. Uh, we're still looking for someone to take over our part in the Safe Families Ministry. If you um, have questions about that, you can talk to Gary Fisk. Uh, and with that, uh, someone is going to come up and explain what LWM LWML is, and it's Jill. Okay, come on up. Good morning. I hope everybody can hear me. I'm mic'd up today, so that's a good thing. Um, welcome to church service at Here at Good Shepherd, and I am Jill, obviously, and, and help running the Women of Good Shepherd group. Um, just to tell you a little bit about Good Shepherd and the, the women here, um, we have a very active group who have been around for about 50 years in our congregation. And our mission has always been to serve others. And so we do that with the collection of mites. And what are mites, you might ask? Well, those are the coins that we have loosely held in our pockets or in, in our car seats or wherever we, we can find them. We gather them, we put them in our, our boxes, we collect them, and then they do amazing work around our state, our country, and our world. Um, as Pastor Will mentioned in his service sermon a little bit later on, currently our national organization called LWML has actually over $2 million worth of grants um, going around the world, here locally, and across our country. Um, so with just the collection of these mites here, they do amazing things around the world. So today, you're going to hear about a lot of women who are serving in different ways, be it ushering, be it greeting. Um, be it doing some readings and even a children's message, along with serving down in Fellowship Power. We hope you will take a few minutes to join us down there, learn more about how and what we do as the Women of Good Shepherd and through our national organization called Lutheran Women's Missionary League. So thank you for all your support over the years. Thank you for, for your prayers. Continue those and continue collecting some of those mites for us. So it's God's blessings to you today. Thank you very much. We begin our worship service with 948. Thank you. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. us pray. Almighty God, you announce your will for us in mysterious and troubling ways. We pray that as Mary once heard and accepted the angel's message of your will, we too may hear your call and respond with full faith and willingness to serve. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever.
first reading today is from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, verses 10 through 20. He who loves money will not be satisfied with money, nor he who loves wealth with his income. This is also vanity. When goods increase, they increase who eat them. And what advantage has their owner but to see them with his eyes? Sweet is the sleep of a laborer, whether he eats little or much. But the full stomach of the rich will not let him sleep. There is a grievous evil that I have seen under the sun. Riches were kept by their owner to his hurt. And those riches were lost in a bad venture. And he is the father of a son, but he has nothing in his hand. As he came from his mother's womb, he shall go again, naked as he came, and shall take nothing for his toil that he may carry away in his hand. This also is a grievous evil. Just as he came, so shall he go. And what gain is there to him who toils for the wind? Moreover, all his days he eats in darkness, in much vexation, in sickness, in anger. Behold, what I have seen to be good and fitting is to eat and drink and find enjoyment in all the toil with which one toils under the sun, the few days of his life that God has given him, for this is his lot. Everyone also to whom God has given wealth and possessions and power to enjoy them and to accept his lot and rejoice in his toil. This is the gift of God, for he will not much remember the days of his life because God keeps him occupied with joy in his heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You want to sit with Brinley? She'll sit with you. Okay, poor daddy. Whoops, there we go. All right, so today I have got a fun message that I want to teach you a little bit about. Boys and girls, come on up. Whoops, lose my mic. Get that baby back out of here. Whoops, Brinley. There we go. Okay, we're good. All right, now let's see if you guys know who this lady is. Anybody ever seen a picture of her before? No? She doesn't look familiar to you? Ooh. Well, her name was Rosie the Riveter. Can you say Rosie the Riveter with me? Rosie the Riveter. And what was her story? Her story was that when, a long time ago during World War II, men of all ages had to go off and they had to go fight in, in the war. And who was left to do the jobs that they had done here in this country? Right? Because they were off fighting. Well, women of all ages and types had to step up and they had to be able to work men's jobs in factories and workshops and all kinds of things. So she was there to motivate. It was like a poster to motivate the kids and sorry, the, the, the women all over this country. So she helped the workforce to continue to work. And so that was the story of Rosie the Riveter. Kind of a great story. Well, I'm here to tell you today that there was another lady that helped out and helped to serve the Lord. In this case, let's see if you recognize who this lady is. What do you think? You recognize her? Who knows? All right, Leo, who is she? That is Mary. And how did Mary help the Lord, ladies and gentlemen? 
How did she help? By following what Jesus said. By following God's direction. She was a young girl, as you know. Wasn't even married when God called her to be the mother of her son. Can you imagine that? At a young age? And she did something really cool. She joyfully stepped into that position and helped become God's healing or God's, God's direction for the life of Jesus, his son. So with that, she became a helper. Now, here, here's the thing. You guys and gals and all your parents and all people have been called to help God in some way, right? To help serve. God wants you to do that. And our group, the Women of Good Shepherd and the Lutheran Women's Missionary League, have in this case also been a big help in God's hand, helping people all over the world through what we call these mites. And it's just a matter of filling up these boxes, boys and girls, and collecting mites from all over to, to do God's work. So today, what I'm going to ask you to do, boys and girls, is to, yeah, is to be able to take one of those, fill it up with some loose change if you're able to, bring it in, there's a big mite box that sits right across from the office, and help the ladies and our, and our world help to serve in that way by looking at missions and helping people out who are in need of it. That's our help, is to is the take a look at how we can do that. So today, as we take a look at um, having you go out and help to serve, I'm going to give you a cross to remind you that God loves you very much and he wants what's best for you and wants you to be, there you go, honey, be the light for him to those around you, okay? And I'm also going to give you, because you may have, as you said, maybe lost it or something else. Yep, you get one too, Renly. Here you go. Also to remind you that these mites, just like the widow's offering, who did just a little bit that goes a long way in bringing missions and helping people around the world. So let this mic box that you're going to put together at home possibly remind you of how you can help serve the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. So with that, can you fold your hands and we'll say a prayer together? All right. Dear Jesus, we are so happy that you came and that Mary was your mother. She was happy to be your mother. She was happy that you came to save us from all of our sins. Today, we are also thankful for the women of this congregation who are part of the Lutherans Missionary League and all they do to serve you. Please bless our service and help us to do it in love. In Jesus' name we pray and we all say amen. So thanks for coming up, guys and girls, and I uh, love seeing you in Sunday school, but also I hope that today you have a fun day and that you remember what we talked about today with Rosie the Riveter with the Mother Mary, and with you and all the things that you can do whoops, to help serve their Lord. God's blessings to you all. Thanks for coming up. You can keep that. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Go, Renly. All right. Whoops. Yep, this is hard for old grandma to get up and get going here. Yikes. Thank you. We read Psalm 119 responsibly. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart, I see you. Let me not wander your I have stored up your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. Lord, 
With my lips, I declare all the just decrees of your mouth. In the way of your testimonies, I delight as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 4. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear, lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For good news came to us just as to them but the message they heard did not benefit them because they were not united by faith with those who listened. For we who have believed entered that rest. And he has said, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Although his works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has somewhat, somewhere spoken on the seventh day in this way. And God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again, in this passage, he said, they shall not enter my rest. Since, therefore, it remains for some to enter it, and those who formerly received the good news failed to enter because of disobedience, again, he appoints a certain day today, saying through David so long afterward, in the words already quoted, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken of another day later on. So then, there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works, as God did from his. Therefore, let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart and no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. We rise. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory be to thee, o Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. 
for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the name of Jesus, amen. When America entered World War I, there was a great need to bolster our military. To help the recruiting process, they developed a famous poster. The poster was designed in World War I and was used again in the next war. The caption reads, I want you for the U.S. Army. And Uncle Sam is pointing directly at the viewer. Today in our text, God points his finger at Mary and says, I want you. God calls on Mary. Mary responds in faith and trusts in her Lord as a servant, ready to serve. She was ready to serve on short notice for a big task of being the mother of the ultimate servant, God's son, her son. And as he gives his life as a ransom for many. May we be ready to serve, to serve as baptized children of God in gladness. An angel by the name of Gabriel, God's messenger, was sent to bring Mary a message that would change her life. Gabriel shared words of comfort along with Mary's job description. 
Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Not only does Gabriel, not only does Gabriel say to Mary, stop fearing, but adds, you have found favor. Mary was not worthy of God's favor, his grace, his undeserved kindness. She was a sinner just as we are. She didn't earn God's favor any more than any of us have. But God chose her to be the mother of Jesus. What was about to happen? God was about to fulfill his promise to send a Messiah. God was going to send his son on a mission to save the world, to save all mankind from their sin. God did not merely recruit his son, as someone may be chosen for a special task. He was going to send his son to pay the debt for all sin of you and me and all people. As Luther stated, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. After all those years of waiting, God was finally going to make it happen. Mary, of all people, was about to be the mother of the Messiah. Mary, needless to say, was perplexed. You can only imagine what thoughts may have been racing through her mind. So she asks a question. Her question was not like the question of Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, when he asked the angel for a sign. But she does ask for an explanation. Her confusion is understandable. She asks a simple question. How will this be since I am a virgin? Mary received her answer. Mary's child would not have a human father. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. This child was not to be conceived and born in sin. This child was going to be called the Son of God. This child that Mary would conceive would be God's own Son. Perfect. He would not be sinful like you and I. The title of the Son of God was a title that belonged only to Jesus. As Jesus said, whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Mary's response, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Mary was ready to go. Mary was a woman of faith. It was faith that allowed her to accept the angel's message without question and place herself in the position to serve her Lord. She was ready to serve. What was the basis of her being ready to serve? It was God's word. Let it be to me according to your word. She believed the message that Gabriel delivered from God. It was God who was telling her that she would be the mother of the Son of God. And she believed it. She heard and she believed God's word. Uh, and his word was the basis of her belief and the foundation of her trust in God. It was her faith that allowed her to say she was ready to serve. How would she tell and explain this to Joseph, however, was not going to be easy. And yet she trusted in God that it would all work out. She was ready to serve. Jesus came as God's son ready to serve, but for a, big, a bigger task than just being miraculously born. His task, his job description, as he shared with his disciples. For even the Son of Man came not to serve, not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus became a man, and he came to serve. He taught and healed, and then he went to the cross and rose from the grave to bring us salvation. He was a true servant. 
Paul sums it up in his letter to the Philippians. Christ Jesus emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. As a true servant, he made the impossible possible. By God's grace and favor, he was able to accomplish the impossible, open up eternal life to all who believe in him. He came to the earth on a rescue mission, a mission that took him from the cross to suffer death for all the sins of the world and then to rise on that first Easter to conquer death. On that first Easter morning, Jesus accomplished his mission. So what about us? Mary was ready to serve. Jesus served. What about you and I? If we are looking for someone to imitate, we can look at Mary and her response. We are able to make ourselves totally ready to serve our Lord. And how does that take place? We have experienced God's grace through the efforts of his Son. It is he who has brought us to the holy font of baptism. God has given us his written word and we, that we hear proclaimed. God has redeemed us through Jesus. And because of that redemption, we have the opportunity to be servants, just like Mary. Paul put it in this way in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Jesus died for all, that those who might live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. We stand ready to serve with joy. On this Sunday, we celebrate the LWML, the Lutheran Women in Mission. Their motto is all about service and the attitude of joyful serving. Since 1942, the Lutheran Women in Mission has focused on, affor on affirming each woman's oneness in Christ, encouraging and equipping women to live out their Christian vocations in active mission ministries and to support global ministries. They have been and are ready to serve their Lord. They have a goal of this biennium to raise through their might boxes, as Jill said, a mission goal of two of a little over $2 million to fund mission projects both in the U.S. and around the world. God called on Mary, and she was ready to serve as she told Gabriel. I am the servant of the Lord. God sent his son to serve. And Jesus said to his disciples, even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many, May we also be ready to serve. May our response as his baptized children of God be one of service, as Martin Luther expressed it, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. In the name of Jesus, amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. We rise.
This week in our prayers, we pray for Greg Frederick and Joy Merkey as they recover from surgery. Uh, we pray for Connor and Megan Kaditz as she's dealing with some complications in her pregnancy. We pray for Pastor Growth, Glenn Roberts, Asher Parmley, Gerilyn Frederick, Troy Sockwell, Norma Jesuits, Judy Rolstad, Jack Wood, Chad Frenzel, Tom Weiser, Phil Zastro, and Bob and Gretchen Martins. And we also pray in Thanksgiving with Carl and Kara Millette as they celebrate their 14th wedding anniversary. We stand for prayer. Lord, you are near to the brokenhearted and you save the crushed in spirit. Deliver us from every fear and trouble that the praise of your name would continually be in our mouths. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, with us salvation is impossible, but with you all things are possible. Give boldness to your church to proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, by whose death and resurrection the way of your kingdom has opened. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, bless all who study at our universities and seminaries. Raise up more church workers, for the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Lord, in your mercy, spare the servants of your church from love of wealth and from the fear of difficulty of their task, that they would gladly set aside every comfort for your sake and for the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, Heavenly Father, lead our households to find eternal rest in your Son and in his word. Give fathers and mothers diligence in teaching their children and preserve us from the hardness of heart. Give us urgency to hear the good message of salvation today. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the Lutheran women in mission. We pray that you would continue to bless them as they bless them in their efforts to serve your church and to support those who do ministry around the world. Lord, in your mercy. When the righteous cry, you hear, O Lord, and deliver them out of all their troubles. Draw near to save the brokenhearted, the crushed in spirit, the sick, and those in need, especially those that we've named. Lord, in your mercy, since we have a great high priest, Jesus Christ holds us fast in our confession through all temptation and preserves us from all, from all sin. Give your blessing to all who draw near to your throne of grace, especially those who receive the blessed sacrament this day, that we may receive mercy and find grace in, to help in time of need. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, your Son left his earthly home to do his saving work, and so he knows what it is to leave family behind. Comfort your children who have left home and loved ones for the sake of the gospel. Set them firmly into the family of the church and sustain them in the hope of eternal life in the age to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed is 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Oh, Christ, Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Oh, Christ, the Lamb of God, that takest away
Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy endureth forever. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.